All right, that highlight was just the appetizer for uh, the reason that China joins us today. We have the honor of unveiling the 2022 WNBA All-Star starters. But before we do that, let's take a look at the process of how the teams came together. The starters are selected by a combination of votes from fans, current players, and media, with the fans having the largest share. The league's head coaches will then select 12 reserves, which will be announced next week, and the teams will be drafted by the captains of each team. So let's get to the unveiling here. Drum roll, please. There it is. Let's go. Come on, give it to me. Instead of traditional captains this year, the WNBA is giving us co-captains this season, okay? So Brianna Stewart of the Storm will co-captain a team with legend Sylvia Fowles, while Asia Wilson will co-captain a team with Sue Bird, who is extending her record number of All-Star games to 13 appearances. So, Luchina, both Sue Bird and Sylvia Fowles are All-Stars in their final seasons. What does that say about the impact they've had on this game? Well, first of all, I think we have to note that this co-captain designation has nothing to do with the voting. Sue and Syl were actually voted into this right. All-Star game as starters. But what it says about their impact is that the fans wanted to see Sylvia Sue in one more game. Yeah. Fans account for 50% of the voting. Uh, we're talking about two future Hall of Famers, two players that are arguably the best in the history of this league at their various positions. So um, the fans got what they want. I'm sure everyone's happy. These two definitely deserve to have another all-star appearance. And I love this co-captain situation. I do. I like it. Are they? Are the vets going to take over? The youngsters <laughs> going to be making the decisions? I'm in interested to see how that'll work. All right, let's continue with the reveal, starting with more MVPs, the reigning MVP. Making her fourth appearance here is John Quell Jones. Yeah, can you feel that breeze coming in from Bahamas? 6'6, John Quell Jones of the Connecticut Sun. That fourth appearance, she's pacing the Sun 15 points per game, ranks third in the league with nine rebounds. Also, a great cover story on John Quell out today from our Katie Barnes. You will want to check that out. Congrats to John Quell. Yes, congrats to John Quell. We've got two time MVP Candace Parker, of course. Yes, Candace Parker. Getting another all-star nod. I mean, it's in Chicago, right? It right. makes sense for Parker to be out there showing and running and passing the triple-double queen from the point forward position. We love the Ogumake sisters around here, obviously. And Neka Ogumake, 2016 MVP. Yeah, I was happy to see Neka get into the all-star game despite the woes of L.A. We'll have to get into that another time. But leads the Sparks in scoring and rebounding. And definitely a fan favorite. We also have a trio of young stars making their all-star debut. The Aces' Kelsey Plum is averaging over 20 points per game. 20.3 to be exact. Second most in the WNBA. Her teammate, Jackie Young, who is averaging a career-best 18.2 points per game. And then the final first-timer is the Liberty's Sabrina Ionescu, who leads the team in scoring and assists. So to recap here are the 10 starters for the All-Star game. Just an incredible lot of talent here. Sue Bird makes her 13th All-Star game appearance and her 11th start. Both are the most in WNBA history. The Aces currently own the league's best record, and they were awarded with three All-Star game starters in Asia Wilson, along with a pair of first-time selections in Kelsey Plum and Jackie Young. So LaChina, with Sue and Sylvia captaining or co-captaining these teams and three young stars out here, what do you make of this collection of talent we've got here, particularly the young stars? Yeah, I mean, I'm impressed. I've been impressed with the youth star talent in the WNBA over the last few years. When you look at finals MVPs and MVPs, a majority of them have been 27 years old or younger. So right. there's been a youth movement. They've established themselves. But what I see happening right now is not really a passing of the torch from a Sylvia Fowles and a Sue Bird, but more of a change of style in the WNBA, the end of an era. Sylvia Fowles is more of a traditional back-to-the-back -back center, pounded in the paint, rebounder, right. Sue Bird, pass-first point guard. You don't see many of those anymore. Yeah. They now call it the lead guard so they can get shots off, yeah. right? Although she got a lot of shots off in Brooklyn the other night. She absolutely <laughs> did. But I think more than anything, that's what we're seeing now is yeah. just a change of the guard in terms of the way the game is played. But no doubt Sue and Sylvia have made a huge impact on the game. Two future Hall of Famers. And guess what? The young guns are ready. They're oh, up yeah. next. Yeah. They're ready to take their place. In they the are game. ready to take the mantle, that's for sure. Let's take a look at some of the key dates coming up as it pertains to the All-Star game. The team captains will draft the All-Star teams on July 2nd. 
And we'll have that for you, obviously, right here on ESPN. A week later, it's the Skills Challenge and the Mountain Dew three-point contest. Chicago's Ali Quigley won the three-point contest for the third time in her career last year. And the All-Star Game is Sunday, July 10th on ABC. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.